guys, Kevin Mitch here on the Big Head Pod, just sitting down, sitting here thinking about some of the whiskey that we've been been uh, privy to, being a part of the sponsor here on our show, Herman Marshall Whiskey. You guys get a chance to drink this stuff, try it out. The single malt is by far the best one they have. There's four kinds. They have a single malt, they have a blend, they have a bourbon, they have a rye. The order I would go in is a single malt by far. I just found this. Don't ever try and take this from me. I might have to beat you with the bottle. Then the rye, the blend, and then the bourbon. This stuff is phenomenal. Texas made and Texas produced here, guys. This stuff is unbelievable. So if you get a chance to do it, go grab yourself a bottle. This stuff is amazing. Hey, welcome to another edition of the Big Head Pod here on the Dub Network. Today's guest is an entrepreneur, former NFL wide receiver, former Boomer Sooner, and I don't know if you claim Oklahoma or you claim in Texas now. So, Mr. Mark Clayton, and the younger of the Mark Claytons, not Clayton Duper Mark Clayton. Mark Clayton from Oklahoma looked about, what, 25 years younger than that Mark Clayton? About. about. I was yep, doing. Yep, I was just yep, doing a little yep. homework when I saw that, and I'm like, man, there's no yep. way Mark is 62 years old <laughs> when, I, when, I first, <laughs> when I first saw that. So, you know, doing – Doing, no, doing a little homework no. and just trying to catch up and see. So, no doubt. I, I, if, I, if I was, I, I'd let you know what I was taking. <laughs> and then I'll send you to my link. <laughs> hey, we all need it, right? Because what, what we put our bodies through, playing yeah. and everything else. So, for sure. Look at you. What you look like you're drinking right now. What do you got going? Yeah, got a little you? whiskey. We'll have to get you whiskey. some of our yeah. Herman Marshall. That's what I'm drinking right now. One of our Herman Marshall whiskey, oh, yeah. they're a sponsor of ours. They're, uh, building their place up in Wiley, a big old outdoor distillery, about 20,000 square foot distillery in the process right now. So nice. I'll have to get you some. I'm um, headed up there on this week okay. to grab some. Love so that. just let me know what you like. We'll talk after a little bit of uh, – we'll see what you like, and, I, and I'll okay. bring you some back for sure. So, um, okay. and yeah, this is my Sounds first good. one doing a little nighttime conversation doing it. Usually during the day, I don't want to be doing that because I'll fall asleep. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, so, I, so I'm doing perfect. a little homework on you. Born in Oklahoma. Go to high school in Texas, and then yeah. go back to college in Oklahoma. Yeah. How did yeah, that come man. about, man? So, born. I mean, we moved to Texas because, uh, well, my mom. So, I grew up in a rough area, North Highlands, Oklahoma. Anybody that is in Oklahoma knows the Highlands. And uh, my mom was like, um, "We're changing. We're changing scenery. Like she had. We had to get out of here." But I threw a fit. I did not want to go at all i love my friends and where i was at and it was very comfortable so she let me stay for one more year and uh man after getting in trouble in school you know three more times i saw the tick my uncle like didn't help your cause <laughs> that, did like, you? it didn't it didn't and so i got shipped in the middle of the school year to okay. texas and uh went to morton elementary in, in arlington okay. texas so you were young then at this time okay yeah, I was young, just a young knucklehead. We all are at that, you know, especially, you know, at that age, our friends, we get into all kinds of trouble and everything. Oh, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I just, I mean, I'm sure nobody got in trouble for having a gun in school <laughs> in elementary. Right? So you come down here, go to Arlington, <laughs> Sam Houston, right? Um, yeah. Uh, which is in another, of, 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 is that play, is that one of the one of the tougher schools down there in Arlington from what I've gathered? Yes. Sam Houston, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yep. Yeah, end up there. We had shoot there. Was, one day I go in school. And so there, there was unfortunately two shootings at the school while I was in the four years I was there. And one of them, I go, I walk, I'm walking into the school in the morning and a kid run like runs by kind of the crowd that I was in chasing another kid with a gun. And it was like insane, like like he really just ran by with a gun. <laughs> like, like what the hell is going on? But no, yeah, it was a little, it was a little rougher, you know, of of the schools, you know, in Arlington. But you know, we had just a lot of kids that trying to figure it out on their own. Uh, not a ton of guidance at home, and you know, you what do you do? You know, you follow the crowd. And so I was I was fortunate that you know my my mom stepped at the time they were you know for whatever reason i get to texas and things change my whole everything just changed uh mentality changed 
just changed. Probably just be, the water. Being south but, of the Red uh, River. But my parents were, uh, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. It was, it was like a, a mix. Like I said, a base, and then the Texas water was like the perfect mixture to like yes, balance sir. it out. But uh, yeah, my parents were, you know, pretty pretty hard on me, and it it kind of I needed it, and so it was a it was a great you know equalizer and, and slowed me down, and you know was able to do well in school and get on. Were you college. always a football guy, or did you play multiple multiple? I know sometimes some schools kind of. Pigeonhole guys that play one, maybe two sports. Where I grew up, I grew up in the East Coast, so I played. We had different seasons. I know down here it's different. So, were you just a football guy, or did you do other sports? Okay. Other sports. And so I was uh, in in high school. I did. I was football, basketball, okay. and track. Uh, but as I got into my junior year, my basketball coach told me I needed to pick one. Um, actually, he he was more like, "You should go. To, you should go to football because." I'm not going to play as much. <laughs> just letting you know. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay. But, well, then why'd you ask me what no, I wanted to no, do if you just tell me, go, if you're not going to play? <laughs> Indeed. Like, yeah, thanks. So, yeah, yeah. It was uh, pretty instrumental in <laughs> helping me dis- or pick my path. Did you start running track? Did you run track in college well or just, just football when you go into Oklahoma? Uh, it was just football in college. Yeah, so uh, it, you know, and a lot of the attempt, well, my my doing other sports and then attempts at other sports was really just to get away from all yeah. seasons. Oh yeah, you know, when football season rolled around, I definitely I was trying to be in basketball, and I was. And then basketball season, I got in the track. Uh, I even tried, you know, tennis and baseball, which <laughs> you know, I was no kidding, <laughs> but. <laughs> I tried it. <laughs> hey, hey, that's the good thing, though. I mean, different guys, uh, you know, played different the sports. They've tried it out and everything else. And but you know what? I think it helps collectively as far as the mindset of you know the way things move, right? And, and just being able to do different yeah. things. I've I've coached some kids, uh, a couple kids in particular that can run. They can uh, that they love baseball and they love football. You know, they can they can go either path, right? They have that. That it, right, it's that hand-eye coordination that's that's difficult, and I'm sure tennis probably the same thing. Especially if guys are hitting a tennis ball 100 plus miles an hour, it's not very easy either. Okay, no, not at all. That's one of the you know, obviously, I mean, I'm sure you have these yeah. talks, you know, greatest athletes of all time type yeah. talks, and it's you know, and I'm I'm it got to be the guy who we can throw in any sport, and for the most part, farewell. We're like, gonna compete. Yeah, yeah, compete. Yeah, and yeah. be in there. Like it, it looks like if you spent five years doing this, I could see exactly. You, right. you yes, you're you're yeah. you're an athlete, right? Yeah. Basically, is what people can do. Yeah, yeah. you'll you'll struggle, but you're going to be competitive, right? And I think that's what separates yeah. the, those the elite athletes is when, like, even as a kid, right? You're out doing stuff. I can't play basketball, but I'm going to be on the court. I can make a jump. But everything, my elbow is always out ball, but I'm out there at least trying to compete, right? I'm not going to drop 30 on anybody, but I'm going to compete. So, but you come on to my playing field, right? It's going to be a different story. But that was the balance that, you know, that we have as kids, right? Yeah. I, you know, I hated running. I couldn't run track. I don't, I never understood why I had to run 60 yard dash. I run 90 feet and turn <laughs> left, right? And if I have to run that far in the outfield, somebody else is going to be going to get it. And that's what I could, that never understood, yeah, but probably. you know, that, but that's just how we are though. That's that competitive nature that, that creates it. So, I mean, it's, you know, seeing that and, yeah. and it seems like you use sports to get out of whatever the situation was you were in, you know, to try and to guys running down the hallway, I need to do yeah. this. So, so, so in, in high school, you know, colleges come, the recruiters are looking for you, you know, why Oklahoma, why not, yeah. you know, other like in Alabama or Miami or something to that yeah. was because it was home for you or. It was partly that, um, but I'll tell you, so, you know, you just said about using sports to get somewhere. And so in my mind, it wasn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't get recruited really in football until my senior year. I got my first letter going into my senior year. Um, I was a quarterback on junior varsity. Um, and so it was like, I'm, I'm probably not going to, you know, go play college, anything, basketball or football. Uh, so I was, I was yeah. set to enroll in the service and enroll in the air force or, you know, I wanted to be in the air force. Um, and, you know, and, and then the recruiting started to happen. 
And so it was like I was I was going to use the Air Force to just get somewhere stable to do something that I wanted to do. I was really big in architecture, engineering, and so I felt like going to the Air Force and learning how to you know fly was a was something that I was really looking to get into, and being an architect would be ideal. And then recruiting happened, and that just flipped the script um, and opened the door to a whole new possibility outside of or past high school and uh man those you know it was it was it was amazing to have all the coaches come and you know pitch and and tell them why their school was the best and why you know i should go here and not there um and then at the end of the day what i saw at oklahoma because i wasn't i was a nba guy like basketball was my love football i i watched i watched nfl but college i really didn't know much about college ball i knew it from the bowl games but i didn't know college ball um but man when i started getting recruited oklahoma the, the thing i saw was a mike leach offense yeah <laughs> and you know as a receiver you you turn on the tv and essentially they're throwing the ball you know 60 times yeah. a game that was attractive yeah. very attractive so they, yeah. so the you know the, the recruitment the recruiting process start you know, after your junior year, but a lot of guys too, you'll hear stories of, you know, you're out, you're running track, right? You're running out, running a hundred and there's a, right, you said, somebody's there and they see, wait, who is this guy? This guy just ran, you know, the second off world record pace of a hundred. Is he, what other sports is he doing? It maybe this guy can, is he doing, is that, was that something that came about or was it just through football alone? It was through football alone. Uh, it was because we also had uh, a guy named Shadai Mitchell. And at that time, he was a he was a number I want to say three or four player in the state. An athlete could play multiple positions and was was the you know ten five hundred meter guy four low four 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 three guy um, that everybody would come to see. And then they saw the little scrawny kid <laughs> over there who was starting to make a play or two. Uh, you know, like man, who, you know who is that kid? And you know, I was fortunate to being an offense that we threw the ball quite a bit. And so I had a lot of opportunity and was able to capitalize on it. But a lot of those eyeballs really came from, you know, should I, I mean, we had him, our quarterback, uh, Brandon House, who ended up going to TCU, um, who, you know, well recruited. And so, man, I, I, a lot of their, you know, uh, attention that they got, allowed me to, to be seen. And I would say coach OZ too, cause he was, a lot of he was huge. He was big on making sure everybody went to school. Um, and so we had a lot of guys, you know, just whether D two like any yeah. school, like he made. We had a lot of guys sign and go to school because he was he was a, a, a real big time champion for all of his yeah, kids. He was, he was seemed like he was vested in you guys more than just the football side of it. Trying yeah. to, you know, you know, develop men uh, beyond the the football field. But I think a lot of that gets yeah. lost with with kids these days of everything's about that you know i'm they're out I, everybody needs to come see me oh, yeah. right and, that, and that's how i got put on the map i was i was a sophomore in college and a junior in college carlos Pena ended up being a first round pick but i had a great game there and mm. they you know that's kind of, that's what put me on the map was them there not watching me oh, wow. kind of like you know what you're saying i'm yeah. i'm just out here doing my job but hey these guys are going to help me but you're not thinking that way you're just out doing your job and here it is yeah. Exactly. And now you get this opportunity. So you get an opportunity to to go home, basically, right? Back to Oklahoma. Yeah. I yeah. mean, what was that like knowing, signing that letter of going, hey, I'm going home, you know, telling your parents and everything else? Man, um, it was it was it was it was a blur. I would say that it was a blur. Um, you know, I was I was very uh, I guess emotionally immature when it came to expression. <laughs> like I would, I'm still, I don't express much, you know, today, but still it, at that time, it was just like, man, it's cool. I'm, I'm getting to go to Oklahoma and play in a passing offense. Um, and I have a ton of family in Oklahoma city. My dad had 11 brothers and sisters. And so there's cousins on cousins on cousins, my mom's side, you know, it, all that. But in my, I didn't think about that. I thought about getting to go and catch these balls, like being his offense and, you know, really do what I'm enjoying. Yeah. Um, and so getting there was, I was happy-go-lucky. Uh, also wasn't 
expecting to go there. And so there was some um, real grace that I felt in that and some real like, man, I'm, I'm not supposed to be here, but I am. So let's get it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> let's make it count. Um, and so that, that, that set the tone uh, for me not feeling so much pressure going in there. And you can just, be yourself. You're around, you're fun. around people that you probably hadn't seen in a while, especially friends coming and here you are coming back. Yeah, but it seems like you, you took it in stride because sometimes people will, the, the pressure of the, everybody around wanting your attention, right? You're here trying to focus on football and everybody, Mark, Mark, right? Everything is, is this, but it seemed like you were able to kind of draw that line and be able to focus on football when you needed to and the family and friends side on, you know, as well. Yeah. I would, it was a non factor, bro. Like I, when we moved to Texas, I mean, you know, we were in Texas, um, you know, my cousins and everything, there, there's cousins, uh, you know, and I, I was like, man, I think they're my cousin. They got Clayton, like, and they're in Oklahoma. They're probably my cousin. Um, but I, being in Norman, was I was so isolated. I'll say, like it, it that was, you know, and and I'd say my my mom did a good job of, uh, you know, kind of being the the no person yeah. for me a lot, uh, especially in NFL. But uh, man, I was I was pretty pretty isolated when it came to that. I didn't have to deal with a lot of the pressure of having to tend to friends or be something for somebody in their or deal with their expectations of me because they felt like they were attached to like they had rights yeah. or they I was obligated because we have this relationship, your family. Like I didn't, I didn't deal with that. Not in college, really, certainly not in college, uh, which I'm you know fortunate for. Um, but that's another thing that I know kids and a lot of people deal with and kids today because of, social media um and just they're connected with thousands of people and you know there's probably you know 10 15 people within arm's reach that in some way form shape form or fashion they're kind of pulling at them which is i couldn't imagine yeah, dealing exactly. with that. <laughs> like, I, yeah me yeah i could i i, I couldn't i'm fortunate that I, I didn't and staying and staying away from that we you know we played it i think at the right time because it seemed like social media was picking up right when we were you know 2010, 11, right when it was, which is yeah. because, it, like you said, the distractions that it causes, you know, everybody, you know, hey, that, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, even a conversation like this, somebody can take a picture, right? A picture wrong. And all of a sudden, hey, look, oh, you know, yeah. look, he's doing this. And and that's the, and, and that's the problem. It's almost as if, you know, it's, you hear coaches nowadays that we went to a high school meeting. My kids are going to be freshmen this year. High school coach said, get off social media. The first thing he said, you know, <laughs> scholarships are because of because you don't think about it until until it's done. Right. I mean, guys, you know, there's guys you'll see now. Oh, something he said 10 years ago on there. He, you know, right. It was it was a mistake as a kid. But yes, Dude, but I, but it's amazing crazy. how they can use this stuff, you know, you know, to that to these kids, what they can use against them and everything else. So, I mean, it's yeah. and it's hard. Right. You've got sounds like you got little ones. I do, too, is, is trying to teach yeah. them that. Right. Of. That mentality that we had is, is is focus on what you need to do, and this right these outside distractions are, can be a problem. You know, it seems like you like I said you handled that. You were able to to do that. So I mean, you know, played at Oklahoma right for Bob was Bob Stoops for for four years. I mean, three years, four years. Yep, four, uh, years. four years. Okay, at Oklahoma. Yep. Perfect. So you were there. I mean, not so playing there national championships. Would you guys? I'm, I'm not. One thing I don't – I went to a 1AA school, so I refuse to watch college football until they get a playoff. <laughs> my, when I, my went to Delaware, so – and you played with Flacco. Oh, so yeah. with Joe was after me, yeah. 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 Uh, but we had 16 yeah. teams in a playoff, right? And right now they have six. So until they do that, I, yeah. I refuse to root for any college football. So but exactly. yeah. <laughs> so that, that's, my, that's my college football <laughs> feeling right there. But so you being in Oklahoma yeah. and, and that playing in so, – I mean – I don't, I don't even know. Like I said, that, that era you were there, um, yeah. talk to a little bit about that, how yeah, it, it was. was. It was dominant. It was amazing. So we were, so coach Stoops got there. I was in that, his first recruiting okay. class. Uh, they did a change of guard the year before. So he brought Mike, you know, Leach and, um, Mike Stoops and Brent Venables and, um, Mangino and coach Long and coach Hayes and Bobby Jack Wright. And like all those, you know, those guys for the next, 
essentially like eight years. Well, my my four years there for sure, um, where they turned the program around and we got back to what Oklahoma football was known for us in the you know fifties, fifties, sixties, and then in the seventy, late seventy, in the eighties, um, and to be a part of that. And I didn't even know that they were like they had they had losing seasons b- before that, on, you know, with Coach Blake and Schnellberg, and it was it was. It was the Sunni yeah. Desert, you know, at that time. And then for Coach Stoops to come in and have this one season where I, I want to say first year I had like eight wins, seven or eight. And then my freshman year, we went on and we went to the national championship uh, versus Florida State and we won. And then that completely shifted the tide. Um, and not only did Coach turn the culture and the program around, now we're uh, starting to get all these, you know, recruits and the, the top top you know everybody wants to come the there a plus yep. plus guys a five star guy yeah 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 the cream yep. of the crop um and you know again we go back you know and we had a quarterback injury my sophomore year i got injured and so i only playing like two or three games but you know freshman year was was cool i had like freshman all the way 12 or whatever uh sophomore year short junior year come back and then um jason white comes back after his second uh torn acl and in that our junior season, it was like our the biggest, you know, season uh in OU, I guess QB receiver in OU football history. And Jason wins the Heisman. I was a Blitnikoff finalist. Um and you know, an all American, first team all American. And uh I lost to Blitnikoff to Larry Fitzgerald, which is awesome because he's yeah. go like he's crazy. Um and then that kind of that was a big part of setting Oklahoma up to be you know, the new QBU, yep. if you will. Like, we're going to throw the ball all over the place and we're going to play good, hard defense and Oklahoma's back, uh, if you will. Um, so it was it was great to be a part of that changing of the guard or, or you know, re like reigniting the, the program and a lot of the championship history uh, that was there. And we played, I mean, I would, was fortunate to go to you know an Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl, Rose Bowl, uh, what else? The Cotton Bowl, um, and they were great. They were all the great. national championship was that the like the thirteen to three game or something? Was that against Florida yep. State? Okay, thirteen, 13 to two. Yeah, okay. I remember it was yeah. a weird. It was a weird two was. A, it was a really yeah. weird scoring game. <laughs> I remember. I remember seeing that game. And, so yeah, defense was lights and I out. Guess, we took a safety. Yeah, <laughs> for, yeah. You know, it was a defense. Okay, was that's on. and that's what I, like I said. That's I mean, I, I remember you know watching that. Stuff. I mean, I'll watch some of the games. The uh, were you part of that the Boise State game or were you already gone? The the hook gone. and ladder game and everything gone. with the was it at, out at the Citrus? Was so, that the Fiesta Bowl? I was, I was you there. were there. Yep, I was there. And yep. that's. Well, I, I mean, yeah, that's I that's the stuff that you know that I you, that you remember of you know of the different what programs do and everything else. But like you said, from where you said it was a desert to here becomes now it becomes this. It, I know it sounds a bad like a football factory though, right? The guy, amount of guys that played at the next level after college. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's got to right. be a hundred guys that have played yeah. it, while yeah. you were there to do that. So you know, so but developing that, you know, you talk about. You know your mom with and your coach in high school of teaching, yep. worried about the school side of it, and that can get lost, especially at the Division One level, and a program like where you are in Oklahoma, which is because you know we always, you always hear stories about it, right? Underwater basket mm-hmm. weaving, right? You know, phys ed for four classes yeah. and everything else. But I had the, I had the classes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. But you, I wanted to be an architectural engineer, and I started off in it, and then it was like, man. You got to work out like this, and no, nah, no, nah, I'm not doing that. So I, <laughs> I end up in communications, but them electives, I was like, "Yep, basketball." Yes, yeah, <laughs> and people, don't, what people don't understand is a, a friend of mine. Uh, actually, she plays basketball. She walked on to Texas playing basketball, and uh, named Sarah Graves, and she wasn't going to play, and she walked on. She goes, "Man, she goes, this is unbelievable. This is a full time job." I said, "Yes." I said, "You don't have time for anything else but school." And Pratt, and you're done. There's, you know, if you you don't have time to go out and party, you don't have time to do. It's not uh-uh. social. It's not. It becomes a it becomes a business, but it's good and it's bad, right? At that point, because it's you're focused on 
what you want to do, but you're also focused on, like you talk about, where you are, you're in Oklahoma, defending national champions. Everybody wants a piece of Mark Clayton. Hey, there's Mark Clayton, right? You're in class, and you're not in class with football players all the time. There are some classes, like you said, you got to take, and it can be tough, right? And, and people don't understand that, do they? They just see the Mark Clayton on TV, right? They see the Kevin Mitch on TV, but they don't see the other stuff of trying to dodge everything else, trying to manage lifting and eat in the nutritional side and, and trying to sleep yeah. and recover. The it, it is. And that's what I, people don't see that. And I think this generation is lost in that whole mix of, Hey, he's on TV. He did that. I'm good. I'm, I don't have to do this other stuff. Right. But you were, it seems like you had yeah. that mentality and that, you see, you're an old school guy like me, right? It's 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 the work. It's the yeah. blue collar. Put your nose to, and 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 go to work, right? And it's yeah. so then so you know playing this, especially dealing with an injury. You know, like you talked about right because when you get hurt playing at that level, you're worried about the next guy yeah. coming up and taking your, you know the Wally Pip taking out you know the whole Luke Gary Babe Ruth everything all that, and now you've, you're injured. You're coming back. So, I mean, once you get, you get hurt, what, what's your mentality at that point of, of can I do this or is it something Man, that, you know what? It, 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 I was I was young, dumb, and yep. full of confidence. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I got hurt, <laughs> it was just what it was. <laughs> and there wasn't no, I'm not coming back. Like, it wasn't. What was the injury? Hurt. So, my first was actually pretty much so I had um knocked off a, a significant chunk of cartilage. And so I was bone on bone. Uh and this is my sophomore year while I missed the rest of the season. Um they said, hey, we have a uh, a new procedure called microfracture. Mm -hmm. Uh this is two thousand and two thousand one. And so nobody I didn't obviously I didn't have heard of it. I'm eighteen year old kid. And they're like, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's 50-50, um, you know, the the results where, you mean, you, you may be able to get back and be good or you may not. But um, we have the best doctors. There's Brock Schnabel, who was an uh, Olympic team doctor at the time, um, and Dr. McGinnis. And so they're like, um, hey, we'll we'll do it. And, and my family, you know, my mom and everybody's there. They were like, uh you know, I mean, what else are we gonna do? Because <laughs> like, I wasn't able to, I couldn't run. Like, I, it was, it was pretty bad. And so we did it. Um, and that was a, it, it was like a six month, like a six month process. Because that was the first I had to be, be off. off of it. I was none weight bearing. Six week? so, oh, eight eight weeks. Oh, maybe six weeks. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. Did eight, six I guess, to eight. Yeah, depending. Yeah. I mean, I worked at a hospital six, for a while and seeing that that surgery done. Okay. So I've seen it done. Yeah. Six yep. to eight. Yes. And so none weight bearing, which is. Like that sucks. Yeah, you're 18 uh, years because, old. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> oh, oh, that sucked big time. Um, but at, during that, you know, the frustration of just not being able to do it was was the thing that was the fire that was behind it. There was never a, I'm not going to be able to do it, like in my mm -hmm. mind. And you know, I'm you know I was one of the guys who you know, they would have to tell me you need to slow down. Like no. Dude, like you, you can't just keep running like that. You can't just keep cutting like that. You can't just keep doing this. Like we got practice tomorrow. Actually, we got two practices tomorrow. Like rest. Uh, so going through rehab and doing all that stuff, it was. I was just obsessive and just I want to yeah. do extra. All right, let's do some more. All right, let's do more. And and so early, you know, and I think I've dealt with injuries similar throughout all the way up until the end. Where it was like, of course, of course, I'm coming back. Yeah. Of course, this is just a matter of time, yeah. I'm, I'm, and I'm not going to drop off. I'll probably be better after this. And that mentality is just that yeah. went anywhere. <laughs> like it's, and it's yeah. and, it, and you're and it's you know your age has a lot lot to do with that the, in the factors that go into that. But you're right, you're you're a kid, and you, I can't be on my leg for eight weeks, right? You're a college kid. You've got, you know what you know what do you do? So you know so deal with that. You know, you come back, play f two more years, to, right? This is your sophomore year, so you miss most of your – okay, yeah, so you come back, play. Yeah, you know, now yeah. all of a sudden you're a senior, you know, the the yeah. NFL. So was Josh White your quarterback when you were a senior, or was it uh, uh, Jason yeah, White? Jason, Jason White, Jason yeah. White, okay. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. I remember yeah, – and then yeah, Josh Hibble was the next one, right? Was he the next one? 
yeah. So it was jo- yeah, Josh Hypo uh, Hypo and Nate. Nate, yeah, okay. What well, okay, yeah, okay. The Hypo Hypo is okay. Is, uh, okay. Yeah, nah. So so playing so so yeah. senior year and everything else, you know, scouts are there, you're thinking are you thinking NFL at this point or are you just are you still just Yeah, after my junior year for sure. We got um uh, you know, the your letter, yeah. your grade, your draft grade, we got our draft grades. And at that after my junior year, I was like a one two. And so me, uh Jamal Brown was a one two. Uh Jason White had a good grade. Dan Cody was also a one two. Um and Vince Carter considered uh leaving too. He was uh he had a pretty good grade as well. And so this group of, you know, juniors that were, you know, just really you know, just really good you know, leaders, I'll say, we were pretty much the yeah. captains. Um, you know, we were considering leaving and uh, Coach Stoops. Well, actually, we, Coach Stoops talked to us, but we had all, like, kind of had our own side meetings and just, you know, we had lost to LSU, um, 21-14, very close. Essentially, had the same team coming back. And so it was like, I think, like, we should, we just, I mean, we stay. We'll go back. Let's, back. Go, let's, let's stay, run it back, win yep. it and then we'll we'll ride this thing out. And we did. And so everybody stayed. Dan stayed. Jamal stayed. Jason stayed. Um, everybody stayed. And, you know, sure enough, it was great because, you know, that that spring or summer, a kid named Adrian Peterson came. No idea who that guy is. School, <laughs> got on campus. <laughs> it was like, seems already awesome. But now we got this yeah. guy. <laughs> it was like, oh. I think we're gonna be all right. I think, I think we're gonna be all right. So yeah. So I mean, so, yeah. you know, so you, you talk about that coming back that senior year. Now a days, you yeah. see a lot of these guys. I'm not playing. I'm not gonna play in my bowl game because I'm worried about injury and everything. Would that have even crossed your mind, or would one of your teammates slapped you upside the yeah, head and go, "What in the hell are you doing? This is a team you're trying to." <laughs> uh, right. But you right, you see that nowadays, guys. Well, that's all you see. Oh, I'm yeah. not playing in a bowl. Yeah, you just yeah. played 12 yeah. games. What? You know, look, I I see, and I'm all, like, what I'm I'm not mad at it. I'm like, I'm not mad at it in certain circumstances, situations. Like, I'm not mad at it. Um, and at the same time, I think is is dealer's yeah. choice, you know, because ultimately you have to live with you for the rest of your life, you know. And that's you know, my son is 15. He's about to be in yep. the mix, and so. And I was always like, I I appreciate the fact that I was able, even though I felt like my guidance didn't have quite the experience. Obviously, he's going to have a lot more guidance from my experience and, you know, the community and network that I have versus yep. what I had way back then. But even in that regard, it's still going to be, you're going to make your own decisions. Like, I'm, I'm going to give you what I think, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's on you. And I'm not mad either way you go. I love you. Yep. Period. They'll never change. Um, and so, you know, I I look at it and how it is today. I think a lot of kids did, you know, hurt. A lot of kids have hurt themselves. A lot of college kids have really had to deal with um, a lot of the, 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 the bruising, the, the brutal mentality, because football is different, you know. And there's a lot of injuries that happen in college that um, – you're you're not there's no collective bargaining agreement there's no um therapy that's going to get paid for by the university there's no after career care that's going to come to your aid there, there's yep. none of that um and so you know we obviously we're moving into where you have your nil um in addition to the transfer portal and all this ha- having to do with the business of football and how um, on the corporate side of college football, the ball's always been in their court, and they've benefited greatly. The kids have benefited greatly as well, but I'll say there are, you know, the 97% of kids that don't go on and go to the NFL, a lot of those kids had to deal with a lot. That's a lot yep. of percent of the kids yep. that are not going to get a, a, a certain amount of, you know, dollars to kind of hedge their transition into real world, into yeah. real life. You know, somebody's in the NFL and they hit pension and they make it the three years and four games. The majority will not. And so of the 3%, a lot of them won't even, they're going to get, you know, fizzled out as well. Um, and so it's like, 
man, the percent of that 3% that doesn't quite make it in the NFL are still kind of dealing with some of the stuff from college, in addition to being a practice yeah. dummy for the most part, um, in the NFL. And there ain't, ain't a lot of support that's going to come there because you didn't quite make it, you know, to that, that, uh, the vested status, but there's stuff, there is some, some things that are, and so I'm, I'm like, man, a kid today has more knowledge about the business of the sport, in college and in NFL and me having more knowledge about it back then. If I saw it like that, who know? I don't know. I don't know, you know, where I would have been, what I would have chose. But I, I have to believe that I would have been more of a businessman than a football naturalist and loyalist, like to the game, like no matter what, because that's what I was. I was we're I was, we're yeah. back. Like I'm, I will play this game for free. Like I don't. Yeah. The ma- I don't that mentality. I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Like yeah, it, yes, I'm out here. Like what? My I didn't have an insurance contract. I, I had a first round, second round grade my junior year, and I didn't get an insurance contract going to my senior year. It was just. We out here. It's football. Like we're playing. Like whatever. Like let's get it. Um, very risky. Now nah, hindsight, like you yeah, know what? Um, and so my son would never do that. Like that's not an option. Yeah. <laughs> like period. But um, just thinking through it today, I just think the business of the sport has made it downhill. It's made it into the homes and you know the athlete now, and so their their thought process has, and I think should be different. Um, approaching the thing that they love to do because you may do that thing that you love to do, but it's only going to give you so much, which is as much as you can give it. And then it will yeah. stop. Like it, it it will stop. And it's, it's not a fine line. It's so like fluid and, you know, different situations, so many different situations, so many different family dynamics, it's so much to it. That I just I see it and I'm like man I understand it and I appreciate that there are multiple yeah. options for kids today versus you know yesterday yeah and, it, and it, you're right though it's the it be, you know, the, the the percentage the less than one percent right that even one that go on to play prof- to sign a professional contract it seems like there should be more focus to the college athlete whether whether or not you're the first pick or that that. Your your chances are still this slim, so the, it's almost that you you would think that these programs would push the academic side of saying it's it's so slim. At least it, it kind of steer them that direction to say, like you said, I mean, you had this, you were held yeah. in on 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 the on this. Yet I went this way yeah. because it's, and I think yeah. that would help athletes post career, right? That are done, that are like you said, that don't make it to be fully vested. Yeah. Now now what do yeah. I do? As opposed to, I wish, right, right. In hindsight, we all tell ourselves, I wish I would have put more towards the education side of it, knowing still I had the abilities to do it. And, and you would no. think that that these unions would kind of figure this part out. And baseball is a baseball is a different animal in itself. I mean, our union's been the, is the strongest in the world when it when it comes to this stuff that they yeah. stick together. But yeah. the guys that s- tend to run it understand that it, you know. Baseball's not it's a it's a daily thing, right? Football you have your one day and then and then everything's gone. Baseball, it's we we kind of have it's it's just, it, every, everything's a different animal, but these guys don't seem to have yeah. I think maybe it's the amount of time that we because we play so much, we don't have the time. Like football, you have six days off. So that's a lot of time to really oh, what can I do to kind of get away from this? Baseball, we don't really have that time. If if we're pl- we're playing all the time, yeah. and then if not, we're away from it, and then we can focus on something, right? There's 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 not yeah. that with baseball, <laughs> hockey. Hockey players are just completely different out out of the box, anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, no, and, no. and basketball, I, I, I don't. I'm assuming it's kind of the same way with in. Yeah, as as basically, so yeah. you, you basketball. I think they they I, I think in terms of meshing what it is, entrepreneur, yeah. professional athlete. Marketing, like they, I don't, know, they, they, they kill yeah. it. They ain't gonna lie, they kill it. I mean, and, and you know, looking at player ownership now, which it's crazy. How many MLB players own parts of their teams? Probably, may, probably zero. 
I mean, they, they get into the other stuff, but not owning, they've tried, you know, Jeter was a part of the, Mar- of the Marlins. Uh, I know Alex, um, is, but he's, but he's, a rise bought, but actually he's bought, he's part owner of the Timberwolves. So, but it's not on the baseball side. Yeah, the so I, so it's, I, you know, I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's weird. It's weird but, though how yeah. guys are, are getting into it, you know, but it's, yeah. but I think that that helps some of these teams too, at that professional level player owners that have played that, you know, that are, that are doing, that. I mean, you see, they just, uh, Messi just signed with, uh, inner Miami. So, Right awesome. now, he's yeah. part owner, so that's what you want. Yeah. You want guys right that are vested in the sport that they played in, because that's the people that the guys that you want to teach around. That's what's going to bring yeah. people to it, right? Not not a guy that lives here owning. You know, I know Europe, European soccer, right? They don't want foreign owners. They don't want some American owners over there because yeah. it has nothing to do with their culture, and you don't. But you don't see a lot of that. So, hockey, you don't basketball. I'm not sure of. You see a. a uh, football, really. I mean, you kind of have the same owners. I mean, it's you've dealt with it, and they playing, you know, after playing the NFL, dealing with some owners and everything else. I mean, uh, so it's 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 tough dynamic that way. But yeah, so I don't know. But maybe that'll help change the culture down to the the, the lower yeah. levels. I know football doesn't have yeah. a, a minor league level, kind of like baseball does. Uh, NBA started to. I don't know if the NFL is that what they're using the XFL, XFL. for. USFL is trying, you know, trying, but it's, yeah. So, I mean, so, you know, so, so go on playing, you play in the NFL, play with, so you played with Flacco, right? Delaware kid. Yeah. Right. Yep. He's, he's from Audubon, New Jersey. Just so everybody went and he was at Pittsburgh. He got transferred to Delaware. I'm born and raised from Delaware. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, I I actually never had a chance to meet Joe, but you know, I, I, and I was, as I was reading through, you know, statistics and stuff, the blind side came out when you were playing, right? Indeed. So were you involved yep. in any of that stuff with, with the Michael Orr stuff or anything else? I just remember reading about it. Yeah. You know, I you were involved because you were, I just remember, I think he was drafted, I guess that year, Oh nine or something, whatever. And read, just reading mm-hmm. about it and stuff. But, you know, so, so you know, I've, hey. I've you know, play, <laughs> being a wide receiver in the NFL, right. You know, you, you see these, you know, you go back to the days, watching guys like Ronnie Lott, Brian Dawkins, knowing those mm-hmm. guys are on the back end, you know, being, I mean, how big are you, Mark? 5'10", 5'10", 185. So you're like a, you're a Steve Smith guy. You're just a small guy, go out. Tommy McDonald, perfect example, right? I got a chance to meet Tommy McDonald, boomer sooner, right? What, what a yep. great receiver. He was 5'8". Yeah, yes nothing. but mm-hmm. that mentality he had it. <laughs> yeah. so you know so talking about that knowing that yeah. on the back end of these guys what is your mentality you know thinking about that i've always wanted to ask a wide receiver what their thoughts are knowing these all right your division troy palomalu palomalu no it was, it was ryan, ryan okay. clark yeah another guy ryan clark if you i was more aware okay. of where he was palomalu was coming for the ball Ryan was coming well, for your head, <laughs> <laughs> but you knew it though, right? There, there is, is it just oh, yeah. is that just something that hey, you know, coming into like hey, this so you're dealing with twice yeah. a year. Hey. You better know. Was it? I think twenty five or something was his number or something. You better know where he. You, you know it. That's yeah, right. You better know where he is. Yep. So I mean, so that mentality yep. did that ever mess with your psyche at all? Being a receiver in the NFL. Well, I mean, it can't mess with your psyche. You know, in, in in that regard, it it's more of a uh, if I get it, I get it. You know, my deal is if I if I get smacked, at least I caught the ball. Like just catch the ball, like take it, catch the ball. And you know, I was a uh, I was actually a defensive, you know, like growing, like getting in, like my early years in football I was on okay. defense, and I was a I was a head hunter myself. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I got footage. Way back in my day, at the University of Oklahoma. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, man. Bro, uh, who we play? I, a kid from Texas Tech. Say, well, that was back when you could, like, smack people from yeah. the receiver position. Um, I had a – that was my only knockout. I had a knockout. Oh, really? Was a, it was like, wow. Like, I had a, had a real knockout. But, no, I was – I, I like that. Like I was kind of off like that, and I 
So you welcomed it. You welcomed the contact. You wanted it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, bro. It was, you know, it was, I, I became who I was as a receiver after watching Peter mm-hmm. Ward. Peter Ward made people look really yep. silly. He did all the, it was like a, a Reggie Bush or a tra- uh, uh, Tavon Austin, Shady McCoy, um, you know, who today, um, I don't know, a handful of guys. Anyways, but I got into making people miss. But before that, I was always about that contact. Yeah. Like, I love that. And so that set the base for, I'm not worried. I ain't worried about getting hit. I But I enjoy making people yeah. miss. That yeah. is fun. Like, that is that is fun. I didn't, But I also didn't, you know, getting hit, that's, you know, I've been knocked out, whatever. I, I knock people out, like. It is what it is. I come with the territory. I ain't worried about that. And that's why I think great players that are fairly fearless, they're kind of off. Like you got to be kind of, kind of yeah. off because you know the possibility. Like, and 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 you can't at the same time yeah. worry about it. Yeah, I, I grew up an Eagles fan, so but the Sean Jackson, same mentality, same idea. Yeah, yeah. Th- that's just yeah. Fat, like yeah, I ain't worried about it. I ain't worried about it. like yeah. what you got to catch me. Like period. Yeah. Then uh, so the Eagles shoot Brian Dawkins. Yep, well, I met that man. He's a small man. Yeah. Brian's only about five eight, five nine. He's a small, very nice. I met him. Yeah. Very nice, very personable guy. Man, but yeah. man, Weapon X. And those stories of Weapon X and, and seeing that. I remember yeah, he, because yeah. they, they they never the Eagles Ravens never really had that rivalry. You know, it was just because of different divisions, oh. you know, different conferences and stuff. But oh. I just you know I remember those. I you know grew up in Delaware. You either go to Baltimore. Or you're a Philly fan. I was an, and I was an Eagles fan growing up, so that's why. But you know, but 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 seeing that and and just I've always wondered, you know, how guys. I mean, because you know, growing up, we used to watch the Ronnie Lots, right? Those guys that would just mm-hmm. come through and didn't matter. It, you you had just better yeah. duck. And I, and you talk about those the yeah. videos. I sent a video to Isaiah Stanback the other day about it showed some of the college yeah. hits where, I mean. Guys are getting blown oh, yeah. up. I I thought it was helmets. It was the actual football. Yeah. Oh yes, getting yep. But and but and that, those days are gone. But and you know but yeah. and I and I and I get it. You know the business side of it. That you know you're trying to protect players, yeah. but exactly. at the same yeah. time too, it's an occupational hazard, right? But if the guys are going to be stupid yeah. with it, I, I just in baseball they're going to be stupid with it. You can't change, kick them out of the league. Tell them they're done. Right, the same. Don't change the yeah. rules just be right. And, and, so I mean, you that mentality. Are your I thoughts agree. better off on kick? You know, the suspensions or just changing your rules in general? I've always, I've always wondered because I'm an old school guy. Like we used to be able to run the catcher, used to be able to take a guy to second base cleanly, doing it the right way. And if you did it the wrong way, you let the players handle it, or you suspend them and kick or kick them out, right? You you don't. There's no second chances, right? This is it's a business, but you respect somebody. So, what, what, you know, your thoughts on that? Sure. I, I I think I think um, man, I I I, I would have appreciated the fact that clean big hits stayed in the game. Um, you know, the the hammer to hammer deal gets a little murky, but. Um, you know, part of it, yeah, occupational hazard. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm from school of if I sign up to, you know, go work on electric power lines, um, I get it. Like I could die. <laughs> like it's very possible. Um, and so I sign up to go play football, you could get it knocked out. Like it's, it's very possible. Um, and you know, I, I hear, I mean, I understand where it's like they want to protect the product. I want to protect my product as a business owner. Similar, you know, you want to protect the product. You want the product to be, you know, to last, you know, as long as possible in this regard. Um, but there's something, something to some, somebody getting knocked out that is gladiator-esque, that is different from every other sport on the planet. Um, I would say hockey is in that. Yeah in that vein. And I like how hockey does it, to be honest. Um, you know, the, the hits are there. I mean, and if it's some egregious that is truly egregious, I think you handle it, Yeah. you know, from, from, from up top. Um, but I think there's a place for the physicality that is 
dangerous, in which that is what makes football football. Um, I'm okay with protecting quarterbacks. You know, that's I get it. I like you know the Tom Brady rule. Great quarter. Love the Tom. Love Tom. Uh, a, right, but I mean the I, guys are getting blocked into it. And they try and, and they're hitting to their knee, and it's a penalty. I mean, you know, I I get it. But it's it's frustrating. Yeah, but it's a especially for yeah, you, I'm sure it a, is. Yeah, because we were. I mean, that was that was a part of one of the games I, that yep. I was in, you know. And so yes, but uh, I mean, I, I I get I get where they come from. A quarter, you know, I wouldn't want my quarterback to go out. And if we had a Tom Brady, if I was with a Tom Brady, like obviously, I'm like yeah, let's protect our quarterback. Uh, appreciate you owners for deciding to make sure the quarterbacks are are good, but let the you know your 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 speed and power powerful guy like all let them do what they do like yeah let them get after it and the quarterback I think there if the quarterback puts himself in harm's way he's liable to get yeah. smacked in which I like that they do like you know quarterbacks that are running and you you ain't giving up and you. You in the flow of that, like you, you can get it, like you you should get it, because uh, it's football. And if if you're out of that pocket and you're starting to you know do your thing, I think there's I, and I, I like how um, I can't recall the play, but I, I know a quarterback got hit pretty. I want to say it was Jalen Hurts last year. He got smacked pretty good on the sideline, and you know they they wanted him to call flag or not, but. No flag. It's a good clean hit. Jalen's running. Jalen, you yeah. know, he he welcomed yeah. it and it didn't go in his favor. And he got yeah. up, you know. But I just I I love the physicality of the game. I think that's absolutely what makes the game the game. Um it is still a, a, a beautiful game, but that's one of the things that, you know, probably obviously there's bias there. Uh and you know, me being a receiver at the same time still is like, yeah. Let, let let don't take any more physicality away from what it yeah. is like you we're about maxed out yeah <laughs> like where 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 we could go in terms of staying away from you know, flag football yeah people. i mean i, I but, yeah. you know, the defensive receiver thing you see that guys are i get you know i can what, what you know the my biggest thing in football you're taught to tackle somebody what do you what's the what's the basic rule of tackle see what you hit correct See what you hit. What yeah, do you see? On. But what do you see? A lot of this, the putting the head down, which causes a lot of. I worked with a yeah. spine surgeon forever. Spinal spinal injuries. I've seen okay. that. But and and you're taught that from the youth level, right? I'm sure your son has been taught that to tackle. Yeah. But why did they insist on the helmet down type of tackles? Do you? Un, I mean, have you ever asked anybody that question? Why? Why? Yes, yeah, you see them a lot. That's all you see. I get. I get trying to not look, knock the ball loose, but I Here. still want to see the ball a lot of teams are taught punching the football others are taught just you see them put their head down what you know have you ever had that discussion with any with a defensive def, with a defensive player about why the head gets put down at all no i don't but i i, I feel like there's a sense of safety for the defender to kind of um cover up if you is yeah so, you know i don't not that I don't say I, you feel more secure in yeah. launching, if you and that you're going to deliver a bigger blow, but I just I mean I I remember what it, just what it felt like to to kind of launch or to to go yeah. right perfectly into somebody like right through here, and then their body just go lay yeah. flat like it is it is amazing yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> like, uh, and and it is one of those ones where you you, you kind of ball ball up up top and just, just yeah I, I get turned in the head but you see a lot of them just the head down I mean I, like you talk about Weapon X when Brian yeah. and Dawkins hit Algie Crumpler in the FC in the NFC Championship game coming across he hit Algie mm. just straight shoulder chest and it was like Algie hit a hit a brick wall but seeing that yeah hit a brick wall yep, and he yes it just and, yeah, but th that's what I mean. Those are guys. They knew how to hit hard, but they knew how to do it. You know, do it the right way. Well, yeah, that everybody's not composed. And similar to 
you think everybody is is that good of an athlete in the league? No, but you're right. Not. They're not. You know, no. they're not. Like they can't process that in that moment at, as fast as other guys, and then hits precisely. You know where they, where the target is. But your Monday morning quarterbacks are sitting here going, "Man, he could have done this, done that, done." And here you are saying, ex- right, right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're right. So, all right. So, yeah. so, on this subject, is was there one time in your career, college, high school, professional, that you got hit that really sticks out in your mind? That one that you just, if you could take it back, you would have just, you would have veer, you know, you would have veered left as opposed to right. Is there anything that sticks out? You know, everybody has that moment of where you just. Yeah. Man, you know, so the one. One where I was, I was out and going in the wrong direction was actually on an onside <laughs> kick, which I yeah, had a choice. You're, you're like, part of the hands team. <laughs> <laughs> hands team, man. <laughs> like, like right in the oh man, dude can't. And it was like the ball. It, it um my whoever was in front of me <laughs> got it, got down, and I was still I was coming to. Yeah. Secure him, and I I called it like right in my face mask. It was it it was bad. It was bad. That one that one knocked me. I was to his. I had to get somebody had to like you know help me get back to where we were at. It was just before uh, the concussion protocols and everything else that where they had been spotted. But like yeah, somebody go get Clayton off the field right now. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, no, there's no spotters. There's none none of that. None of that. I was yeah. Good thing it was in the yeah. game. <laughs> but uh, oh my gosh, you those story. Oh, that was I've always wondered about those guys, man. It's just remember, I remember the days of like a Chuck Cecil, the Gunners that just. Oh yeah, we had to do Crash yeah. Bandicoot. What I mean, I can't even imagine the mentality that those guys had. Those are the dudes, in, in probably in high school. Hey, go run through that wall, and they're you don't have to finish the sentence, type of stuff. No, not yeah. at all. Yeah. Those, those dudes, they had they had a brain, but they only used like <laughs> <laughs> they might as well have played without a helmet on at that <laughs> point. <laughs> For real, probably would have. <laughs> yeah, uh, you told him. <laughs> and you're right. So you know, so all these yeah. you, know, you talk about the hit, all these years of playing. Was there ever one guy that really stood out ab- above anybody else as far as you know the game, the way they played the game? You know, it, yeah. the the knowledge of the game, understanding. That, like I said, just a nod, but also the football mentality, oh, like the football instincts. It's somebody that you yeah. would just go, that's a guy that you want to lead this team. Is there anybody that really stands out for you? Oh, hell yeah. So, first of all, oh, Ed yeah, Reed, I talked about Ed playing with um, Ray Lewis. Yeah, but Ed Reed, like, you know, for me, because he's a DB and I'm, yep. I'm going against him more than I will have to do with Ray. <laughs> uh, but both of, like, it was crazy to have both of those brains on the same side of the ball on the field at the same time. But Ed Reed, by far, like, just, just when it came to, I mean, essentially was like a defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator on the field in the middle of, like, in his prime, he was also as smart as, you know, offensive and defensive coordinators. Like, he knew the game like that, and it was, it was crazy. But then on top of that, he had the physical ability to do exceptional yep. shit. Like he would he would just know stuff and his instincts would just take him, you know, places where it's like he would, you know, abandon the zone position and be like, hey, you you know, it's too high. I the but he had a number of picks that were crazy, but this one was like we we're playing Miami. He was uh we were in cover two, and I'm sure you can find the replay. We we're in cover two and he was the weak side safety. So it was, I want to say it was a three by one formation. He was a safety on the single receiver side. And third down, he talks about it. And he just knew the play. Just leaves, goes over there, picks the ball off at about six, seven yards in the trips yep. set. Like, not. He knew it was going to be before it was even yeah. thrown. He doesn't know. Like, the quarterback looks up. I'm sure there's a touchdown over there. But. He he just did a lot of shit like that where it was just like, bro, how'd you know? But 
you know, fortunate, he was fortunate to have a, a coach, a staff that allowed him to fail yeah. too, because he had to learn and he's also, you know, missed on stuff, but had valid reason for the miss. It was this and the, 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 the last, you know, week yeah. they did, you know, all like he had, like he was like that. He thought the game um, at a, at a was ridiculous level. Um, but it led to a lot of his, his playmaking ability. And so it was, it was cool just to, you know, practice with him, go and him. pick his brain about yeah, stuff. Yeah, go against him. Yeah, I accelerated quick, quick uh, as a receiver playing with that. Deion Sanders was there my first year too. And, you know, just, prime. what do you see? Like, what, 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 what did I do different? Like, yeah. What could I do different? Or what? What about that? What about the, like? What do y'all think? What are y'all think? like? I was just you were learning though, but you wanted the process. You wanted you wanted, and that, and I think that's gone from this generation. If they don't, they don't want to learn. They want to ask the question. They're they're afraid of failure, right? So I mean, you hopefully you instill that in your in your son, your kids. When you're gonna fail, right? But and that's the yeah. problem. The kids are afraid to make a mistake nowadays, and I see that right. same guys. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. You're not gonna get you're not gonna get in trouble making a mistake because at least you're learning. But I've get to a point. Yeah, I've learned that I've stopped trying to give information. I, if if somebody wants it, they'll ask. But if you ever notice, nobody yeah, asks anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah, and I, you were, but, I literally was having a, this talk to my son the other day. But, but you're right. But you were. Like, that's just the way. But you're trying to. That's the old school mentality. That I think that we have to be able to ask the question. Even now, I'm still asking guys. Uh, you know, that are playing now. Hey, what are your thoughts on right? Because because it's ever evolving. This this younger generation thinks that they know everything, right? And it's and it's hard, yeah. you know. The old school, I don't NFL baseball is the same. We're trying to get back to the old school st- side of it, and it's and it's tough. But at least, like I said, you know that. So you're and your son. Hopefully, he he understands enough to say, "Hey, Dad, you know what are your thoughts?" You know, kid, but right, but our so this our kids don't listen. That my kid won't listen. That. That they're starting to. They're starting to ask the questions now. I think once they realize it, you know, you tell us about somebody slap upside the head. Something hits them upside the head, and they're like, "Yeah, Dad, hey, what do I need? To, hey, how do I do this? You know, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Right?" And then we see that, and it's right because we don't we don't know everything, and we're, that's why I said it's always evolving. But but it's mm-hmm. fun to sit back and watch. And there's some. I'm sure you sit back and watch NFL games and just go. What what are these guys thinking, right? I mean, it's it's got to be tough. Yeah, it's got to be tough. Yeah, so oh, yeah. it is. But you know, it is. It's where it, we at. It's where we at. It is. So so I'm so getting into it. You know, you know, post career. You know, I want to yes. talk about these headphones. These live live headphones. I want to hear about these live. What does live mean? L I V V, not live yeah. golf. Yep. I, I, I want to hear, Taylor was talking yeah. about these headphones. I want to hear about these headphones and how yep. they're, you said they're they're tailored to the athlete, correct? Right. right. So they they have a uh, athlete dis- predisposition. Predis- so before we get into that, yeah. how did this even come about? Is this something that's? I mean, you're playing if you're playing college football at Oklahoma, you're playing in the NFL. The last thing on your minor. Or headphones, unless it's uh, – but you see guys nowadays wearing them. So is that where that concept came about? No, it came from my last year, essentially, my last year playing ball. I ruptured my patella tendon and was doing a lot of rehab, all my rehab, and everything was in the swimming pool, mm-hmm. as you know. You know, pool is huge for rehab. And I wore beats and so – and I because I enjoy over here. Over here, to me, it's just a better – user experience um and they would just they would move all over the place basically and i was like man there, there isn't an over ear on the market that i could just put on and it's secure still an over on the market that you can put on and it's secure um and so that's where the concept came from and then you know me wanting to be an architect i always had the ability to sketch a little bit and you know think through um some different ergonomics to try to, uh, you know, accomplish. Don't tell me you're a good drawer, are you? And make it fun. So I started sketching this design. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it started. <laughs> I started sketching the design. Um, and, you know, the early design was kind of like a headband that was a little different. Um, it, wa- it wind. It had a little winding aspect to it. Um, 
And I thought the ergonomics would allow for that with a little bit of tension to fit more secure. That was it. And then uh, from there, got introduced to an industrial designer, my partner, uh, and who is on on our patents now, uh, Bill Lott. Um, awesome dude. And we spent time in his basement putting this together, developing and using 3D printer to get our first concept. And, um, you know, initially it was all about, you know, functionality. And so I wanted it super secure. I wanted it waterproof. I wanted to put music on it. I wanted it to be this kind of all encompassing headset that that's literally all you needed. Just grab your headphones and go. Um, and so we patented, you know, that, uh, design and that structure for an industrial and a design patent with all of that you know, tech in mind, um, all the way up to artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, and we got that patent back in 2015. And so that's been sitting there. And the first design was great. Uh, um, from a functional standpoint, it did what we wanted to do, but it was not sexy. And so I did, <laughs> I did, <laughs> um, I launched it and got it to quite a few people and started getting all the feedback and, um, you know, only, only like the butch, ladies that like were you know they they liked it and apart from that every other girl thought it was it wasn't sexy and then there were you know the guys of course they you know especially dudes that love to work out like it was like yeah absolutely all day um but then i'm looking at it and i'm like man i think it could you know definitely look a lot better i like the function and i don't think it needs to be as secure so i i designed it for uh parkour and free runners to be able to wear it and do all these flips and stuff yep. you know over your headphones and stay on and they they could do that pretty good which was really cool but that was not for mass market and so i've done a redesign now and the design now looks amazing like it is it is one of the sexiest headphones that you you'll ever see um it looks like something that that come from the future um and it's very very clean um very smooth and sleek design lines uh and so it's it's something that when it hits the market and it starts to you know land on heads people will turn their head and be like what like what it look like where where you get them headphones i ain't never seen a headphone like that before um and in addition to that the functionality is there the tech behind is there uh this one's app based and so we plan to iterate on that and create multiple models in the future with more tech you know design into it um and so i'm on the verge of launching this this fall that's what i was wanting to tell yeah taylor was telling me about when i need one for for the full figured man with the big heads because it's (laughs) he was saying that these he said they were kind of tight on him i go well how's it supposed to fit on my head then what am i supposed yeah, exactly. I I need yeah. I need an NFL style offensive lineman head right. size. I guess I guess that, not that not the five ten <laughs> wide receiver small head. Yeah. So I need to no. be, <laughs> that's what I need to be head yeah. size so that we can get on here yeah. and get promoted. So I just so oh, yeah. so the L I V V. What's what are the what's the acronym mean? So live. It's not. It's just live. And so the, when I first uh, had a, a kid named Tony, he was a free runner out in Miami. He you know, put on and started doing some flips and some moves and um was like, man, this is you know, it's it's cool. I can I mean it's my flow is good. It's like I can just live in the headphone while I'm doing my thing and I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, live, that's good. I like that actually. <laughs> and uh from there it just stuck. I was like, man, live and then it fit with this kind of freedom uh, you know, thought process and, you know, it this lim- you know, limitless kind of removing restrictions that other over-ear headphones have. Um, and it 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 flowed. So I stuck with Live. And so now I have Live, it's Live Audio. And so Live Audio will produce multiple audio products in addition to the headphone that we have coming out. Perfect. So that's that's what I was wondering because I was I was hearing about it. Taylor was telling me about it. I need to hear about it. I want to see him. I need to try these out. And he said the new ones are launching when? This fall? Uh, so the new one is this fall. fall. Okay. And they can go website to go look for this. So 
So website up. We're gonna have it'll be liveaudio.com. Uh, it'll come out of nowhere. We'll have all the the advertisement. Be like, where where where'd this come from? <laughs> uh, it'll be, we'll be Instagram, uh, TikTok, Twitter, all the all the socials. Um, uh, and then our website will be liveaudio.com. Live audio. Okay. Everything's everything's wireless. Are you gonna have a are you gonna have a cord a what are they called now? I don't even know. Corded, uh, yeah, wired, wired, wired and you're wired. gonna have wi- okay, yeah, wired, okay, yeah, both is wireless and wired. See, perfect. So I get them on here. Right out about get them on here. Put your wire in. Yeah, you can three point five millimeter in to do podcasts or whatever. Perfect. We'll yeah. get them on here. We'll start. We'll start whatever. promote. Just make sure they fit. I don't want my head to feel like my eyes are gonna pop. <laughs> Talk about the old. Yeah. No. Yeah. You, exactly. <laughs> See, tell you that first model. Those are, that's one of the, that's one of the learning experiences from the exactly right. It's, it's all, that's what it is, right? You get, there's, you're going to, you're going to fail at it. You're going to make mistakes, whatever. And that's what it is. That's yeah. how you learn. To, but like I said, it's, the, a, the, it's an iterative process, but who would have thought a kid from, from, you know, from Arlington, Sam Houston would be here, promote would be, you know, producing headphones after, you know, yeah. after a, a, the entrepreneurial ship that what you've created and everything else and, and being able to do that, man, you know, you know, you know, commend you for, you know, for doing that and, and sticking with it because a lot of guys just seem to, when they're done playing, they seem to get lost. They don't know what they're going to do. Right. And it seems like you found a niche that, and that's all it is sometimes. People, well, hey, how did you do Right. You hear story. I had Chris Gonkowski on with his ice shaker talking about, yeah. well, yeah, I had that kind of idea. And this, well, we all have ideas, but are you willing to put the work yeah. in to do it? And you're a guy that was yeah. willing to put in the work to do it to get you to this point, to be able to say, you know, what, you know, yeah. I'm not, what you know, the, the football playing is that's, that's who I want, but this is what I'm doing now. I'm trying to help people right? ergonomics and the aesthetics to make yep. it the best I can be. And, I, and that's what it is. And that's what Chris yeah. said the same thing. He goes, I, I just, I put the work in and that's what, that's what you're doing. You're instilling that in your kids and, and hopefully, you know, somebody listening can, can say, Hey, I heard Mark's story and I'm able to, he gave me the idea to be able to do it, right? Who's to say in 10 years a product doesn't come out that say, hey, I heard this story that you know that you talked about about doing it or yeah. anything else, you know? Exactly. And that's all we're trying to do, yeah. right? If you can help one person, we've done our job, yeah. right? Yeah. That's it. That's what that's what yeah. it's about. Well, it's, it's inspiring. Yeah. And, and you know, it's that's why I think that's how what I think about designing when I'm designing something that it should invoke an inspiration, whether uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in electronics, but whatever it is that you're doing, just man, yeah, I can do it. Like, let me let me lock in. Like, let's let's get yeah. it done. And it's and like you said, that's that's the motivation. Sometimes that somebody needs to hear because everybody wants yeah. they all want the they all want the gold at the end of the rainbow. They don't want to take the time to climb it and put the work in for it. So, but like I said, well, you heard me. That that patent's in 2015. I mean, we filed yeah. it. I'm sorry. 2016 it was great. I mean, we filed it in 2014, yeah. and so we're this. You know, essentially, I've been tinkering. You know, at this for nine, ten years, and so it's, it's certainly not an overnight no. thing. And, you know, sometimes it's it's the persistence and just you know sticking with yeah. something. You know, the, I think the best part, Mark, is the fact that you know you talk about when you were playing in the NFL of asking guys the question. Seems like the same thing with the headphones. Hey, what are your, you know, what are your thoughts on it? You know, how, how can we make it better? Right. You're, you're worried about, yeah. you're not worried about your thoughts. You're worried about what other people think and their thoughts, right? There's, you take the good with the bad, but it just, I think that just comes yeah, down cool. to, you know, what was instilled in us as kids of it's okay to make yeah. mistakes, but as long as you want to learn yeah. and learn from the mistakes and get better. Oh yeah. I, I, I found that really good. Um, athletes, players, whoever were really good at receiving criticism and development. Yep. Like some uh, allowing somebody to tell you, nah, that's not so good. Like, ah, I don't do it like that. Ah, like, whatever it is, but being able to not take that to heart and shut down yep. or feel offended, whatever you feel, but just use that as fuel use that as knowledge for going on and being better like it's i, I i'd say it's culture being coachable yeah. 
essentially. That is a word that is lost for sure in this generation. <laughs> just go. Coachable, <laughs> being able to do that. Uh, just real quick, Mark, so people can follow you on – they can follow the Live Headphones on Instagram and or what? Follow you or yeah. follow the business? Follow okay. me, yeah. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, what Twitter, is it? yep. Instagram, just yeah. Mark Clay- Clayton dot MC. Mark Clayton dot MC. Okay, yeah. Just make, sure, make sure we get the right Mark Clayton, the younger Mark Clayton, not the older Mark Clayton. I don't think that, that Mark. Exactly. Clayton. I, I don't think he's on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, I get I get tagged in <laughs> dolphin stuff all the time. Right? Wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong guy, wrong guy. Um, but I appreciate you jumping on here, man, and, and and sharing the story a little bit, and just hearing that. Like I said, if we can, if we help one person, man. We've we've done our job. So, look forward to these headphones yeah, yeah. and uh, and and seeing how yeah, you know, seeing what we can do with it, and seeing you know the excitement. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Sure. We might definitely have to revisit this a little bit, a few years <laughs> after, let your son get into into high school and the college, see see where he ends up. So, man, we I'll shoot you oh, some absolutely, images. absolutely, man. I appreciate yeah, yeah. it. So do it again, man. No doubt, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir.